Uh, Krokop, Mustafa Alter. How how can Krokop lose this fight? Yeah, uh, you know, he, the last time I checked, he was a negative 450 favorite, and everybody is overlooking Alter on the countdown special. They didn't even mention Alter, but they talked about Krokop. So this thing's got upset written all over it. However, comma, I think Krokop is just going to. I'm not going to say he's going to return to form, but I think he's going to look good. Uh, you know, I, I did that whole Vitor's back thing with Vitor Belfort way too many times, and I learned my lesson that uh, you, you never really know. But this one, I'm pretty sure I know. Altar doesn't have the wrestling to take him down. Krokop's got a phenomenal sprawl. I don't know what happened in that Overeem fight. Overeem pretty much... You know, tossed him around. But, uh, and oh, yeah, while we're on that subject, Krokop was losing that round, like, there's no doubt about that. But he was, it wasn't like a uh, Tito Ortiz, Ken Shamrock style beatdown, like everybody makes it out to be. Was he getting his ass handed to him? Yes. But was he getting, you know, made to look retarded? No, I don't think so. So, uh, obviously, I call this fight Krokop, and I'm wearing my Krokop t shirt because. I always wear my favorite fighter shirts on the days of their fights. Uh, and for a long time it worked, but starting around 2007, it started backfiring. Chuck Liddell, Matt Hughes, Dan Henderson, well he didn't really backfire until uh, Anderson Silva, but uh, Crow Cop, you know. So for a while I was getting really superstitious about maybe I should stop wearing the shirts. But I wore Hingo's shirt against Franklin and he won. I wore Matt Hughes' shirt against Sarah and he won. God damn I'm rambling. I need to hurry up and get to the fucking point, don't I? If you're still watching this, I'll be amazed. Even I probably won't want to still be watching this. Uh, Pro Cop by second round knockout. And I'm being tied by saying second round. Because honestly I think it'll probably end in the first. What? Yeah, pro cop. Second round. Knockout. Yeah, he's gonna lose this fight. Anybody that comes out to him is gonna lose. Wow boys, baby, that's fucking hardcore interest music. Fuck him and him. The, the upset train ain't, ain't coming through this station. Not today. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. You got him on the ropes. You got him hurt. You got him hurt. Get off. Oh, get on it. Yeah, beat his fucking ass. That was a fucking weird finish. I mean, I should be jumping up and down and shit, but the... That was a weird fucking finish. What, what hurt him and when he turned his back was an unfortunate look to the eye here. It's just one of the things that happens with those open gloves. I, I'm sure it wasn't on purpose. We've seen it time and time again, Mike, that is the problem with these gloves. And Dan Bergliotta didn't see it, we didn't see it, we didn't see it until this replay. Yeah, that was, so that was bad. See there, Joe, makes one big thing. And I, I'm sure there's a fucking horde of internet dorks waiting to say that Pro Cop's a dirty fighter and he wouldn't have won the fight if he hadn't a plan in the fucking eye and blah, 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 blah. But uh, he was already winning. Pro Cop Al Turk. Uh, did Pro Cop look like a wrecking machine? No. But he, he was winning, gonna win the fight regardless of the big eye poke that I'm sure everybody's going fucking nuts over on the internet. Um, should, should we be talking about him as a contender right now? No. I, I, honestly, I don't think so. Well, I mean, he's perennially a contender just based on his past accomplishments, his uh, reputation, all, all of that kind of stuff, but he's not going to be in the mix or anything. If he even comes back to the UFC, this was a one-fight deal. And I don't know how that's going to work out, but uh, no, he's not ready to 
start being talked about like the old pro cop <laughs> who hangs out with the old Vitor. I hear they uh, share a condominium in old Brazil. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, yeah, okay, not a big win for him by any stretch, but I think it does put his name out there again, give him another fight against a solid contender, or not contender, but, you know, a name that's up there like a rematch with Gonzaga or Congo, maybe even Shane Carwin or Cain Velasquez. Are they dangerous fights for Krokop? Fuck yeah, but, you know, it's the quickest way to get his name back up there, and that's where I, I want to see him get again. Whether he will or not remains to be seen.